Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, Diggy546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. This is gonna be a mini series. I'm only gonna be able to do three of these because the draft is on Thursday. But this is gonna be episode one of why the Giants should draft blah, blah, blah. Well, this day is gonna be why the Giants should draft Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle is someone who I've seen get a lot of disrespect in the last couple of weeks from Giants fans. A lot of people don't believe that he's someone that has a good enough sample size to be taken at that 11th overall pick. I think he does have a good enough sample size. I think he's been on one of the deepest receiving cores in, in the history of college football. If you count LSU and Alabama these last three, four years, it's been really ridiculous with the amount of talent that has come out. I'm just going to go over his game logs. Before he went out with that ankle injury, and, and I'll get to the ankle injury. That's been another concern about him. But coming out of the box, Jalen Waddle against Missouri, eight receptions, 134 yards, two touchdowns uh, against Texas A&M. Five receptions, 142 yards, one touchdown uh, against Mississippi. Six receptions, 120 yards, no touchdowns in this game. And then his last game before he ended up getting injured, he ended up getting injured on a kick return against, I think it was Tennessee I'm looking at right here. But his last game that he really got to play was six catches, 161 yards against Georgia, who have, I mean, these guys are probably going to have three or four corners that get taken this year in this draft. Six receptions, 161 yards, and a touchdown. He's also someone who can be dynamic in the return game, as I just referenced. He's someone who can really, he can line up inside, he can line up outside. He is, I think, 5'10". He's a, he's a legit 5'10". He's not a 5'9 guy. He's 5'10", which is, is pretty decent. There, there's a couple corners who are 5'10". This, you, of course, probably want him to be over six feet. But at the end of the day, Odell was 5'11". Victor Cruz was 5'11". I mean, a lot of these guys are, are 5'10", 5'11", and end up being very productive receivers. When you start to go to the 5'9", and 5'8", that's when it kind of affects things. But 5'10", is definitely tall enough to play an NFL at wide receiver at pretty much any position, the X, the Y. Wherever you want to play him, he can play. So that's not really an issue. He's 182 pounds, and he plays like every bit of it. He plays like he's over 200 pounds, the way that he's really tough to take down sometimes in the open field. He really runs tough, and he doesn't have that same kind of thing that Rondell Moore runs so tough that he's going to he's gonna always be dealing with injuries because he just doesn't care about his body. Jalen Waddle does know sometimes when to go down, when to get out of bounds. He, he just understands that part of the game. You look at his running mate, Devontae Smith at Alabama, he's someone who was, what, 6'1", 170. I think he weighed in at 166. So he's about 15 to 20 pounds heavier than Devontae Smith, and he's about three inches shorter. So Jalen Waddle is is more than enough. He's, he's His size is definitely good enough to play in the NFL. All that stuff aside, I went through his production. The, this was on the same team as a Devontae Smith. This, this is him being the number one receiver on the same team as the guy who probably had the best statistical college season of all time for a receiver. And Jalen Waddle was off to a better start than him. Jalen Waddle was off to the type of start that would have gotten him the Heisman. This is it's just facts looking at these stats right here. He was off to that kind of start. They were both on the field at the same time. They were both making plays. But Jalen Waddle at that point in the season before he got hurt was really being targeted heavily and it seemed like he was going to be a better of those two receivers i still have him ranked over Devonte smith and another thing is specifically the giants we have a kenny galladay we have a sterling shepherd we have a darius slayton when you look at kenny galladay what does he do well he's a guy who can win in the short area the intermediate area and the deep area but the way he's going to win every single time is not with speed quickness and route running it's going to be with being able to use his body being able to make contested catches, and being that big physical receiver. And at that point, you're a threat anywhere on the field. Now, he is someone who can get open underneath. He can get open. He can get separation. 
but his bread and butter is making those contested catches. Sterling Shepard is a route runner, but I mean, what is he, a 4-4-7, 4-4-8? He's not really the fastest guy. He's a slot guy who he's going to make those catches sometimes that are that are sort of big plays, but he's never a threat to take it to the house. He's never a threat to just catch this ball and, you know, go 50, 60 yards to the house. He just never has shown that long speed or yak ability to be able to just take anything to the house. Kenny Galladay, he's shown that he can do that, but mostly with strength. He's, he's not going to outrun everybody. He's going to be a guy that can maybe stiff arm some people, maybe make a great catch and, you know, get some people off of him and take it. But he's not someone who's just going to outrun the defense or, you know, have guys have angles on him and he can just outrun everybody. That's just not his game. Darius Slayton is a guy like that, but he's a guy who's going to get behind the defense and then score. He's not a guy who's going to catch the ball in the middle of the field and then be able to turn that into a huge touchdown. Saquon, he's the only person on our offense who's a threat to score from anywhere anytime he touches the football. He's the only guy on our offense right now. Maybe you can include Daniel Jones with his running ability, but Saquon is the only guy who can really turn any play into a touchdown. We don't have another guy like that. Jalen Waddle again, can line up inside. He can line up out. He can do what Sterling Shepard does in that short intermediate area and be that possession receiver, but he can also turn these possession type catches, these third down conversions into 40, 50, 60 yard plays because he's the fastest man on the field. They won't be any time. Maybe when John Ross is on our team, if he stays on our team and he lines up outside, that may be the only time that Jalen Waddle has any threat to being the fastest man on the field. There really aren't any DBs in the league that are running, you know, the, the kind of they're, they're just not running the way that Jalen Waddle is. I don't really agree with Eric Stokes' 40 time. So I really don't see any corners who are really elite, elite speed kind of guys. And it just shows, it's just going to show Jalen Waddle in this league is going to be able to outrun pretty much everybody. McCole Hardman is not some all world receiver, but whenever he catches the ball in the middle of the field, he's a threat to score anytime, any play. And Jalen Waddle, just because of his speed, is a threat for that. Another reason, Jalen Waddle's speed alone changes the way the defenses has to play the Giants. You cannot shade coverage over to Kenny Galladay if you have a man who runs a 4-2 who is a good route runner on the other side. You simply cannot do it. And then you cannot, you know, you know, you can't shade the coverage to them and then leave Darius Slayton one-on-one with no safety help over the top because he's going to run by you. So if you get that guy who is a 4-2 field stretcher who can basically, you have to play cover two, you have to have guys over the top, really over the top, that changes things for everybody. It makes life easier for Galladay. It makes life easier for Slayton. It's going to open up things for those tight ends underneath. It's going to open up things for, uh, I think I said Shepard. And most of all, it's going to open up things for Saquon and DJ in the running game. You need someone who puts like the fear of God into these defenses. Because if you don't have someone who can stretch the field, Slayton can do it, but he doesn't stretch the field you know, you can, there's a ton of corners in this league that, that run four threes, that run low four fours, that with proper technique can run with Darius Slayton. There's not many who can run with the Jalen Waddle. So that's something you have to really think about. Yes, John Ross may be able to provide us that, but John Ross sometimes is wide open and doesn't catch the ball. And other times he just runs it so fast that he cannot even stay healthy and he runs himself out of his hamstrings. We've seen it way too many times and we need someone who can do that and also be an elite route runner and also have soft hands and also be a lot more durable. So Jalen Waddle is probably my first option at that 11 spot. I think it might be a stretch even now for him to get there, especially with now that um, Atlanta is really linked to Kyle Pitts. I'm thinking Kyle Pitts will go there. Jamar Chase may go with the next pick. And then at that point, it all depends on what the Dolphins do because if they want Jalen Waddle, they'll take him there. And then Devontae Smith could go at seven. But I'm hoping that one of these teams take an offensive lineman or somebody else. That way, Waddle or Devontae Smith will fall to us. But preferably, I would want Jalen Waddle. He is a big playmaker. He is 
pretty much he can do everything. He can do everything from that raw receiver position. He's not the best at contested catches just because he doesn't have the biggest body, but he is very, very good at contested catches when you look at he's, the fact that he's 5'10". You know, you're not, he's not a throw it up every time he's going to come down with the guy, but a good amount of times he will come down with it because he has elite ball skills. He's coming off the ankle injury. I'm not too much worried about it. It was an ankle break. He played through it on that last game. You know, he saw him running, outrunning defenses in, his, in that game, and he was limping on one ankle. So he, he played through that. It's going to take a little bit of time to heal. I'm expecting it'll probably be healed by training camp. I'm not a doctor, but I'm just thinking from, from what I've seen with these ankle injuries, from what I've seen with these breaks, I think it'll just heal cleanly. It'll just come, everything will pop back together, and he'll be the same guy. I do not see this as an issue. NFL teams have not seen this as an issue from the rumors that I've seen. So I think he should be good to go. And he will be pretty much my top pick at 11 just because I don't see another Jalen Waddle in this draft. I really don't. I don't see a Jalen Waddle light in this draft. People want to bring up Elijah Moore, who I've kind of you know started to like a little bit better, but he just doesn't provide the same thing. He doesn't provide the same thing as Waddle. And I think he's a blue chip elite prospect that you cannot pass on if you can get an interior offensive lineman later on the draft, which I believe the Giants can. But this is just the first episode of why the Giants should draft whoever. Uh, tomorrow, it may be Rashawn Slater. It may be Devontae Smith. Maybe Penny Sewell. Maybe somebody else. May even be J.C. Horner, Pat Sertain. So stay tuned for that. You'll see that tomorrow and then Wednesday. And then we'll get into that draft. Stay tuned. I'm going to be live for that draft five to 10 minutes early. Definitely stop through. It's going to be an eventful draft. You'll either get to see a lot of people rage or you'll get to see a lot of people really happy about what we did. I think we'll end up really being happy with the pick that we make. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell and listen. I make all kinds of content for NFL teams, so if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know, and have a good one.